Part 2 of the Indiana Jones Gaming Retrospective. This time we'll be looking at some of the versions of Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade action game that were available during the late 80s and early 90s. They uh, covered many, many platforms. For example, this one. This is uh, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade action game on the Amstrad CPC 464. It's uh, actually quite good. Um, it's a good example of how the, uh, the Amstrad was slightly better than some of the other 8 bits of its generation. Um, whilst, uh, yeah, if you have a look at it, the, the detail's pretty good there in the graphics, uh, whilst the colour may be a bit off given the limited capabilities of the palette, um, it, it, it does show itself up a wee bit that way, but uh, here we go with uh, Indy looking quite well animated, if, if anything. Uh, well, not animated, but uh, at least uh, he's, uh, he's detailed. It might be a bit blue and a little bit chuggy. It's a bit slow to walk here and uh, the controls aren't exactly the most responsive. Jumping resulted in falling. There we go, there's a bit of a jump there. Uh, uh, well, I guess this isn't exactly the most playable version. Probably take you about two hours to, uh, to complete at least the first level at this speed. But uh, the principle's all there, and uh, I suppose it's nice that it, it actually came out at all. One of the nicer versions of Indiana Jones The Last Crusade in the action game is the Game Boy version. It's, uh, it's got very smooth graphics, nicely detailed, and of course the monochrome colouring isn't, isn't the best. Um, but uh, for playability, it's the most responsive and uh, uh, one of the better looking. So the punch range was dreadful too. Uh, even using the whip was a bit of a pain. Oddly enough, that plank didn't disintegrate like it does on many of the other versions. And there's only one. Yes, there's normally two. As we will see in different versions as we do. Okay, just take this guy out. There we go. There we go. Wasn't exactly the easiest thing to do, but. Uh, you have a lot of life force, but you lose it very, very, very quickly. Right. Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade on the NES was a little different. Um, there were two versions. There was the uh, the typical action game, which we see here, which seems to be somewhat identical to the Game Boy version, but actually looks worse, uh, given the the limited palette, but uh, the animation's there, and uh, I suppose it looks alright for his age, it's, it's pretty good. And it's kind of useful that you can actually see the icicles, or the, the bits of rock that are going to fall from the ceiling, and land on you, because they're red. Killing people, again, is a pain. Um, oh yes, the time limit in this game was a real nasty thing. It, uh, in one of the other versions, you actually have a torch that eventually burns out and you have to walk around in the dark. Uh, whereas this just has very limited time limits in between certain areas of the game. Okay, uh, this is quite a tricky... What? Uh, stop it! Oh. oh, never mind. Right, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, the other version. Uh, this is the one by uh, uh, Tato. Uh, it's It's got adventure elements to it, uh, it's got kind of multi-branching multi, um, multi story scenarios. You can choose where exactly you want to go, for example here, I'm not going to go and get the cross, I'll just go to Venice, which means I'm skipping out a level and heading off in a different direction. Oh, um, right, uh, we have to... Oh. I had to do something there. But I don't know if I did it. I doubt I did it very well at all. Okay, so we're back to another um, fork in the storyline. As we head off, I'll rescue Dad. And it plays a bit of music on me. And we're in the Castle Brunwald. And this is where it turns into a little side-scrolling action adventure. It's actually quite charming. Um, it's a little more functional than the uh, the other Last Crusade action game. You can do more and 
see more, obviously. The doors are pretty big in this castle. And everyone runs everywhere. I need to do some ass kicking here. There you go. The little Nazi dead to there it disappears. Very realistic. Okay, and I guess I can go back here and through this door. There we go. Uh, yep, yeah, it's it's a maze. Uh, there's all kinds of different levels, which is kind of nice. Um, if I had have picked going up across the Coronado, I would have been on a ship, jumping over bits of cargo, kicking people the way Neon Jones does his high kicks in the film. And we're down the stairs. Goes here. No. Let's go down there. Yep. Okay. Uh, yep, it's a big confusing castle and I'm guessing I just have to work my way through here until I eventually find a way out or my dad. But in the movie, the door was wired. Ah, never mind. We'll, we'll move on. The version I know best of Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade action game is this, the Game Gear version. I played it for... Ooh, years. It was the hardest game I've ever played. Um, the controls were kind of responsive, but I guess that added to the... That was a little secret there that I worked out a few years ago. Um, it, ooh, darn it. Um, it, it's a game that uh, doesn't require much in the way of thought. It's, it's simple. It, graphically, I think this is one of the best conversions. Uh, Indy looks real. Although, well, yeah, I suppose it should be noted that uh, what the PC and the Amiga version have Indy as in his Boy Scout uniform, whereas this version and the Master System and Mega Drive version all have him dressed as Indy going through the, the caves trying to find the Cross of Coronado. Yeah, I played this game to death when I was a kid. I never completed it because it is unrelentingly hard. You get about 10 lives. And you have a certain amount of life force, and that's very limited. Uh, in the scale of the game, the chances of you completing it are very little. Yes, if you, I jumped there and lost life because I hit the... I hit the roof. Oh, never mind. This is it on the Master System, which is a slightly easier game to play because it gives you a bigger screen, obviously. Uh, it's not quite as closely focused in on the character, and you can see what's coming. Uh, but it uses exactly the same graphic mechanics as uh, the Game Gear version, and there's there's not too much in a way of difference at all. This is probably my favourite version of the game, uh, even above the Mega Drive version and the PC version. I I would choose this one. It just it works well, although I'm not very good at it these days. I don't think there was ever any cheats for this game either. That's why I never, ever completed it. Um, of course, I would go back and try again if someone told me how to get infinite energy or something. There might have been a level skip, but the last couple of levels were just so impossible that uh, I would have just given up <laughs> eventually. Haha, <laughs> got him. Oh, he got me. Oh. Right, the Mega Drive version. This is the best known version of the game. And in my mind, it's it's not a patch on the, the Master System version. First thing you do, well, you notice is that the, uh, the character of Indiana Jones is a different sprite. Everything is different about this game, really. Um, whenever it comes to the art, it's kind of annoying. You've got limited amount of whip usage, you've got limited time because you need more torches otherwise the lights go out on you. Um, the maze is much, much, much bigger than the game here. Oh, well, actually all the other versions of the game. It's a pain to actually punch people. You get hit everywhere. For example, most of the thugs shoot you when they're off screen. <laughs> Take that, you. Yes. 
it's a, it's a nicer game um, than most of the platforms that you see. It, it's very pretty. It, uh, it has Indiana Jones, obviously, and deadly water. And an epic soundtrack. That's the music from the motorcycle chase, if memory serves. You just can't do anything right in this game. You have to learn it, you know. It's one of those games where you just have to replay over and over and over and over again and know exactly where to jump from or what to wait for. I'm sure there's some way to kill him without getting hit at all by these spikes fall from the ceiling again. Yes, it is kind of maddening, this game. Do yourself a favour, get if you've got a Mega Drive or a Genesis, get that Master System converter, stick it in the top, and get the Master System version of it. It's much better. Not that this is particularly bad, but... Uh, it doesn't even look like Indiana Jones, I don't think, in comparison to the other Master System version. But I suppose that's the difference between 16-bit and not 16-bit, isn't it? The flowing graphics, the speedy gameplay. Right, that's me. I'm done. I'll be back in uh, in about a week's time with a look at the graphic adventure version of Indiana Jones and Last Crusade and a few other games that were released around the same time.